Welcome back to Wild Ginger Hand Weaving. In a previous video, I introduced a technique called Bound Weave on Opposites and used it to make a simple block zigzag pattern. The great thing about this technique is that it can be easily adapted to weave any twill pattern, which I'll demonstrate today. There's a link in the description to my previous video that explains the basics of Bound Weave on Opposites. To sum it up, you can think of one color as the main color, in this case dark blue, and the other color as the contrasting color, in this case light blue. You'll always weave in pairs. Start with the main color and then send the contrasting color through exactly the opposite shed after it. Repeat each pair of opposites four times in order to build up a block of the pattern. In fact, this is all you need to know in order to weave any four shaft twill pattern as bound weave on opposites. For example, here's a draft for an ordinary balanced 2-2 twill pattern. The white areas represent the vertical warp threads and the blue areas represent the horizontal weft threads. In order to weave this twill pattern as bound weave on opposites, treat the dark blue as the main color. We'll follow every pick of dark blue with a pick of our contrasting color in the opposite shed. Repeat that pair of opposites four times to weave a block and then move on to the next row in the chart. All the white areas in the original draft will be covered with the contrasting color in the bound weave version. So here's what that pattern looks like all woven up. To weave this mug rug, weave blocks one, two, three, four, three, two, one, and repeat. Two, three, four, three, two, one, two, three, four, three, two, one, two, three, four. And you've completed your mug rug. Now let's look at adapting a more complicated twill pattern. Here's a balanced twill, which I will turn into a 29 block bound weave on opposites pattern. It starts the same way as the zigzag rug I covered in the last video, so I'm starting four blocks into the pattern. So having woven blocks one, two, three, and four, now I'm just going to continue following my chart to weave the rest of the pattern. If you understand the structure of bound weave on opposites, there's less information to keep track of at the same time. All you really need to know is where your main color is going next. Then everything else follows from that. Your contrasting color goes in the opposite shed and you're gonna repeat it four times. So now uh, my main color is going to go in shed one again. And I follow that with the contrasting color in shed three. and repeat that three more times. Now my main color goes in shed two. And the opposite in shed four. Next up in my chart, my main color is going on shed one again. This is the first time in this pattern that I'm going to change direction and go back in the other direction. But the great thing about bound weave on opposites is there is nothing you need to know to do that. Nothing special at all. I'm just going to continue by opening up my shed for my main color. Shed one and following it with my contrasting color in shed three. No special consideration for turning corners. Let's repeat that three more times. Next, my main color goes on four. And my contrasting color will go through two.
And now I'm going to do one, two, three, and four, uh, a repeat of my original four blocks. And now I'm going to do block one, and block two. I have one more block to go to be my center block now. So I'm going to weave my main color on three, and my contrasting color on one. And then I'll measure things to make sure that I'm in line and on target for a mug rug that will measure five and a half inches. If you have an all over pattern that you just keep repeating, you don't really have to worry about where the center is. But if you have a symmetrical pattern that you're going to flip halfway through, then you really need to make sure that your beat is on target to give you the halfway point right where you want it. I'm aiming for my mug rug to be five and a half inches, so the center should be at about two and three quarters of an inch. I'd rather have it be slightly too long than slightly too short, just for the look of the thing. Okay, let's see where we are. I'm going to measure halfway through this block because it is the turning block. And look, I am right about where I wanna be, a little bit over two and three quarters of an inch. So I am very happy with that. It may shrink up just a tiny little bit when I take it off tension, so I think that's exactly where I want to be. And now I'm going to reverse the pattern, do all of the same blocks in the reverse order, and that will finish off my mug rug.
here I'm on my final two picks. So I'm going to need to cut these off and I'm gonna do that one at a time. So that was my very final pick of my main color. I'm going to weave it in before I do my final pick of the contrasting color. Cut off a tail. But now to end my final thread, I like to keep this loose bit tucked in. So instead of just weaving it back in, I'm going to undo that row and weave it in, but flip it around so my cut end is actually inside and I have a solid thread for my very final pick, which will make it an easier, more stable end to finish later. Okay, there's my finished mug rug. Let me measure how long it is. Five and a half right on the dot. I'm very pleased with that. When it comes off the loom, it may shrink up just a little bit, but it doesn't tend to do that much, especially with a dense cotton weft like this. It should stay pretty much that same length. So in this video, I've actually shown two different patterns. Earlier on, I did a simple diamond lattice, which has you go up and down through the four pattern blocks. And then of course, I've also done a more freestyle version. And hopefully I've explained the concepts of bound weave on opposites well enough that you can go out and try all kinds of different twill, twill patterns with this technique. So thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and let me know down in the comments if you plan to try this pattern or if there's anything else you'd like to see in future videos. Happy weaving and I'll see you next time.